Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, honoring Arbor Day on April 26th with an ongoing commitment to sustainable stewardship and conservation of Missouri's forests. Choosewood.com. From St. Louis Public Radio. This is St. Louis on the Air. And they had a kind of a makeshift stage, and it was all, as I said, metal fold-out chairs that were uh, set down. And they started leaving in mass, and all the chairs are making noises. I think some were, like, uh, purposely scraping them and making noise, and they all... It was, and it took a while because there was a bottleneck at the door, and <laughs> it was a good. To leave. <laughs> yeah, it was a good like, and nobody yelled and nobody threw anything and nobody went, "You suck" or you know, "You're making fun of my best friend." Um, but uh, uh, definitely a speed bump in the next few minutes of the the set. But, I mean, you know, you take anybody's comedy, uh, myself included, out of context and, you know, you're, there's going to be trouble. Yeah, I mean, you can't shape your comedy so that QAnon will get it. No, no, uh, that's impossible. I'm Sarah Fenske. Comedian David Cross has a few thoughts about COVID-19, specifically about people who refuse to get vaccinated or wear masks and just might pay for it with their lives. What, what I'm saying is it's okay to wish them dead. It's all right. <laughs> I'm giving you permission to wish them dead. It's, it's all right. Uh, uh, you know, don't be a dick about it. Don't, don't. You know, don't go on TV and uh, say it, but... Uh... <laughs> you know, just quietly, in, in here, in your heart, you can wish them dead. And the reason it's okay to wish them dead is because wishes have no power. It's okay. It's fine. And that is from David Cross's new special, I'm from the Future. It drops this Saturday. You can check it out on his website, officialdavidcross.com. And David Cross joins us today. David, welcome. Wow, coming in hard there. Coming in... (laughs) I mean, you know, you you do not mince words on this, huh? The, the most salacious part of the, yeah, not easing into that at all. I mean, this is public right. radio. We have to go right for the most sure. salacious, right? There you go. That's what we're Hit known for. Yeah. Well, so this new special, uh, is this all about death? No. no. Well, I mean, uh, it, there's that the, the COVID stuff, and then I talk about, um, in a very enlightening humorous way about having to put my dog down oh um yeah so there's the that part has death in it the rest of it 82 percent approximately oh it's all the optimistic joyful life-affirming stuff all that stuff people know and associate with you just they're they're gonna come and just laugh (laughs) at life's pleasures right (laughs) Yeah, there's some stuff in there, yeah. yeah. So this is called I'm from the Future. What's the, what's the joke on that? Um, it, it, like the last uh, special I did uh, before this one, it, the title comes from a bit, from a line in a bit. So I have a whole bit that's the premise is I um, address a classroom full of uh, like seven-year-olds and explain to them what they're going to be like in the future and what's going to make them angry uh, in the future. It's a whole bit, you know, with the beginning, middle, and end. But that's that's where that the title comes from. So you're the man from the future come to, like, sort of warn us, like, here's here's what this is going to be. Yeah, well, not you, just kids. Just kids. kids. Okay, I don't you're, get the it's warning. Too, it's yeah. too late. It's too late for you. I'm afraid <laughs> it's too late for you. But you still believe you have hope for America's youth? Uh, I do. Uh, I mean, I, 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 that's the one part of me that, uh, where I find hope. And I have a, uh, a little girl who's about to turn five next week and, um, I watch her and I watch her 
friends and her playmates and her classmates. And that uh, gives me total hope. Hmm. So on the subject of that hope, I was watching your Netflix special, Making America Great Again, because I I can't watch this one yet. It doesn't drop till Saturday. That's (laughs) when I will learn about the future. Um, You were talking a lot about America and guns and and TV. And you were asking how many more innocent people have to be shot to death before we do something about it in this country? This Mm -hmm. is a question that well-meaning people ask a lot. Well, you said you'd crunch the numbers and that 1,776 people would have to die but it can't be cumulative. It has to be all at once, like we'd have this terrible mass shooting event. Well, a couple of years have passed since this special came out. I'm wondering if you still stand by this number. With America being what it is today, would it take more than that now? No, I think it would take a little less, actually. Not a tremendous amount less, but maybe 48 less, uh, just because of all the the people we've lost um, uh to COVID and, um, you know, the, the, our population decreased for the first time, I think ever. Um, and, uh, and it's, and more and more people are going to die. So I think it'll take a little, a fraction less this time since we are, we're dying earlier. Our quality of life is, uh, uh, dramatically, uh, lowered and, um, uh, our, uh, you know, mortality rate is lower. So, yeah, yeah. So we're, we're a slightly smaller country, so we, we, we can yes. have a little bit less carnage. Again, just crunching the numbers, Sarah. I'm, I'm glad you're staying up on these calculations. I had wondered if you would come in with, like, the most up-to-date information. You're, you're ready for it. Always. I'm the Nate Silver of my room. <laughs> So I got to ask, though, I mean, I thought this part of the special was very funny. And I I don't know, there's probably some people who will not find this funny at all. But you basically said, like, look, we need to do something about gun violence. Why don't we pay some white guy to go to the Kentucky Derby and basically launch a false flag <laughs> attack? And I thought, man, if somebody takes this little clip out of context, these conspiracy theorists are going to go crazy. Like you're basically oh, yeah, well. speaking to what they think happens here. Did that did anybody seize on this clip to try to say this is what the left is up to you know they're going to plant a, a mass shooting uh not that i'm aware of but i try to stay away from that stuff i mean those are like fringe crazy people uh and i i just for my own mental well-being i try to stay away from that stuff and and i'm not 100 percent successful but try to stay away from social media too oh um, wow but uh, and again i'm not and and i have a, a special to promote so i've been on it pretty frequently in the last uh, three, four weeks. So, you know, I, I uh, unfortunately have to see some of the garbage that's out there. But um, I do try to stay uh, a bit away from it. Um, but, I mean, you know, you take anybody's comedy, uh, myself included, out of context and, you know, you're, there's going to be trouble. Yeah, I mean, you can't shape your comedy so that QAnon will get it. No. No, that's impossible. So speaking of of maybe humorless movements, um, (laughs) before your tour was canceled, you had planned to come perform in St. Louis. Now, you have kind of a history with St. Louis. You have called us the most humorless city (laughs) in America. Should we be insulted by this? Uh, Yeah, of course. I would be. (laughs) That's a big insult, Um, David. I I don't know what the context was that for. I'm sure sure I was being, uh, you know, a little... A little wry. Um, I, I, I uh, had not. I had in the beginning of my career. I did not have um, very good experiences in St. Louis. I'm, I'm sure it is all coincidental. It happens sometimes. Sometimes you have there are places where I always have a great set, and there's some places where it's not that great. And for whatever reason, St. Louis was. Uh, you know, I just never. <laughs> Did well there, and um, uh, and then I had one specific experience at St. Louis University uh, that was really bad. Um, I mean, it was funny for me; it'll go in my memoir. But uh, it was, uh, you know, not good for the the Jesuits there, and um, and so I think that's where that came from. Because I I guess mm-hmm. somebody had noted that I hadn't played St. Louis on any of my uh, yeah, I mean, like, at, bigger at, tours. At one point, you didn't play seven, St. Louis for 17 years. Apparently, the slew performance was so harrowing. <laughs> no, I don't. I honestly don't think it was uh, uh, the only place 
to the best of my memory, the only place I've ever said, no, I'm not going there is Florida. And I did that for a long time. And then on the uh, on that tour that you're talking about, the Making America Great Again tour, which is a couple tours ago, um, I played three places in Florida. They all sucked so badly and it was not fun. And I'm like, F it, never. Oops, sorry. I didn't mean to swear. Sorry. You said sorry. no more Florida. I said, F it, no more, no more Florida. And I will stick to that. Um, but I think St. Louis was just a weird coincidence. And, you know, it, when you're, when you're routing these tours, uh, I don't route it, you know, somebody else does, uh, the, the agent, but it's really complicated. It's, it's, it's really tricky, especially if you're doing a long tour. And um, and for whatever reason, St. Louis just wasn't on there. But I did it on the last tour and had a great time. Had a great time. Uh, I can't remember what theater I was in, but it was uh, it was really fun. It was a really fun show. I remember that. So we were no longer humorless. That, that, that we'd maybe outgrown our humorlessness. No, you're way down the list. I t I put uh, let's see, you got uh, Tampa, uh, Orlando. Uh, Palm Springs. I'm sorry, not Palm Springs. What's the other? Palm Beach. Oh, Palm, Palm Beach. Beach. Yeah, they are humorless. Um, yeah, gosh, who else? Uh, the Villages. My show at The Villages did not go over well at all. <laughs> um, Mar-a-Lago. Forget it. Not going back there. That's not a good um, venue for you. I mean, let's no, face it. No, 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 no. Absolutely not. <laughs> I sold a lot of merch, though, oddly enough. <laughs> So the St. Louis University show that, that set off this, this long absence from St. Louis, this was apparently back in 2001. My, my former paper, the Riverfront Times, has, has dug deeply into the scandal <laughs> of, of what got us labeled as being humorless. Um, and what happened is apparently they booked you thinking like, oh, this is this hilarious sitcom guy. And then you kind of exactly. came in with, with some material yep. about Jesus, uh, which didn't necessarily go over. But what I thought was so funny is, is you said they engaged in anti heckling like they didn't try to shut you down they just all it was, left uh, it was impressive i gotta say it was and it was jarring too it it was more i've had people yell and scream and uh throw things but that was the most uh jarring they kind of it was it was actually i i i i, I you know have some respect for it but um uh to preface it i was picked up in the car uh, it was a one-off, you know, it was a one-off gig, uh, college gig, and they pay quite well. And, you know, I flew in from New York and, uh, and two kids, uh, picked me up at the airport. And, um, like most comics, you know, I did, uh, what you usually do. It's like, oh, tell me a little bit. So tell me about the school, tell me about the city, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, and they're kind of going, well, um, St. Louis University is the oldest, uh, Jesuit university in the country and we were founded in 18 and I'm like I, I'm sorry did I'm sorry did you say it's a Jesuit school uh yeah and um we were found I was like have you guys have you guys seen my act are you familiar with my act and then the, the girl who was in the passenger seat went um you're the chicken pot pie guy right and which is a line from a sitcom I you know have very little to do with it. I was like, oh boy, this is going to be interesting. And I went and did the show and then everybody, I shouldn't say everybody, actually, uh, I would say 20% of the people stayed and they were great. They all came up and brought their chairs up front and then the rest of the show was really pretty cool. But I was no more than seven, eight minutes into the set and it was all metal fold-out chairs, you know, and there was one double door entrance uh, or sorry, single door ent entrance to whatever room we were in. And they had a kind of a makeshift stage and it was all, as I said, metal fold out chairs that were, uh, set down and they started leaving in mass and all the chairs are making noises. I think some were like, uh, purposely scraping them and making noise and they all, it was, and it took a while because there was a bottleneck at the <laughs> door and it <laughs> was a good, to leave. <laughs> yeah, it was a good, like, and nobody yelled and nobody threw anything and nobody went, you suck or, you know, you're making fun of my best friend. Um, but, uh, it was, it was very effective and kind of, you know, and it, it, it put a, a, definitely a speed bump in the next few minutes of the, the set. And then I, you know, kind of recovered and, uh, um, and the the rest of us had a good time, but there were, as I said, there was like 
20 percent if that many people left very few people left well i'm glad st louis has recovered your most recent show here uh 2018 uh when david cross was here we did well we laughed hard yeah it was it was great it was a good it was a fun show i remember that so, David, I think our team is ready to kill me because I have not asked you at all about Arrested Development. I'm so sorry. Um, people love this show. And we have so many listeners who want to know, why is it not coming back? Well, I mean, I would watch season five to get the answer to that. I think, uh, I think, you know, there was a very earnest... Uh, attempt to bring it back and I thought season four was really cool in the way that it was initially planned where uh that Mitch had for it to be all this kind of layered stuff and then they went and re-edited it um and I thought it was a a a cool somewhat noble experiment and Mm -hmm. it was interesting and uh I think season five was just um you know uh subjectively i don't think it was good there were a lot of problems a lot of issues that just we weren't able to overcome and i think the show suffered for it and i think you know that's that and also you know jessica passed away and you can't do the show without her so i mean it's just it's you know it's done it has come to its end Mm mm-hmm well, you, so this was such a funny show, people, tears in their eyes, you kind of pivoted and ended up in the HBO show Station Eleven, which was such a great show, such a serious show. What was it like uh, to film a show about, you know, the, the post-apocalypse world during a pandemic? Well, first let me say, I I saw the, the show a couple weeks ago, I... I burned through it so quickly it was it was just wonderful and uh i mean i think it's one of the best shows i've seen in years and years and years i love the storytelling i really gravitate towards that kind of storytelling um i thought the the it looked beautiful it was well directed it was uh there's some amazing acting in there uh i mean there's a lot of great people in there but Himesh, Himesh patel is just stunt i mean it's just great so it's, many good actors a, yeah and uh um and uh um i mean yeah uh and i you know i was i i was in toronto i was uh in lockdown there uh was up there had to move the whole family up there because my wife was working on a show that was shooting there and then we realized pretty quickly we were gonna have to there was no coming back and forth at that point and um so we moved up there temporarily. Uh, we didn't realize we were going to be shut in for six months. Uh, that was a bit brutal. Um, six months, yeah. It was awful. It was really depressing. It was a tough time for me. It was tough on our marriage. It was, you know, luckily my daughter was young enough, so it didn't really affect her too much. But I was having a tough time with it. And and at one point, I, I was just calling my agent saying, you know, just anything, I'll do anything to, to work and to get out of the house. Cause th- literally everything was closed down. Everything was shut down. There's no bars or restaurants. There was no like, yeah, you can come in, but you have to wear a mask and stay six feet apart and show your vaccine. There was no nothing, none of that. It was just shut down. And, um, and so one of the things I got to do, uh, was, uh, you know, offered this part on station 11 and it, and it, suited me and uh, uh i was not familiar with the material but i i came to be uh, patrick uh somerville was amazing it was the showrunner writer uh he and i talked quite a bit on the phone and then in person um and he sent me some scripts and i i'm like yeah this sounds great and then you know my actual participation was so uh you know uh, uh, kind of in and out quick uh, we shot all that stuff over, I think, six days. I want to say, huh. um, and and it was it was a treat to be able to uh, uh, you know get to work and to work on that particular uh, show. And 
uh, work with that cast and the people and, I got to work with. And so, David, I have to cut you off here. Unfortunately, we're yeah. out of time, but out of this suffering okay. ended up being beautiful art. And so, really, I mean, I it's, loved it. Yeah, it's I cried. Wonderful. I was watching the the last two episodes. I was crying. I just it was it was a really really great show. I, I'm I'm so happy I got to be a part of that. Well, David Cross, thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, we want to let people know you can watch David's new special. It's I'm from the future. It starts this Saturday, February 12th, on his website official. DavidCross.com. This episode was produced by Jane Mather Glass with audio engineering and podcast design by Aaron Dorr. Our executive producer is Alex Hoyer. St. Louis on the Air is a production of St. Louis Public Radio. Understanding starts here. Do you find yourself regularly listening to episodes of St. Louis on the Air? Suggest us to a friend you think might enjoy our conversations. And leave us a review and rating on Apple Podcasts on the App Store. It's the simplest way to help people discover our show. Thanks. St. Louis Public Radio is a member-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, Honoring Arbor Day on April 26th with an ongoing commitment to sustainable stewardship and conservation of Missouri's forests. Choosewood.com.